so great. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk has just revealed a breakthrough idea to protect humans in Starship space missions. There will be a small spin on this gigantic vehicle to create artificial gravity simulating the Earth's gravity. So, how will it work? Why can it fix the issue involving gravity? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. One of the biggest problems with traveling in space is the lack of gravity. The human body is born to adapt to the Earth's surface, where we are affected by a constant gravitational force. Without it, there are well-known consequences of long-term exposure to microgravity, including bone mass loss, muscle atrophy, loss of hearing, and other illnesses. Normally, the astronauts in ISS have to exercise several times per day to maintain their bone and muscle strength. However, for commercial spaceflight involving non-astronauts such as SpaceX's Mars colonization, we have only one method. Create an artificial gravity environment that simulates the Earth's gravity environment. Three years ago, the idea of tethering two crew starship and rotating them to create artificial gravity on the way to Mars was given. In the comments section below, Many people express their enthusiastic support for this innovative concept, even Elon Musk with his comment, yes. If you think that answer is too short and lacks any real substance, let's shift to his recent tweet. Starship will have a small spin on the way to Mars. Even a tiny gravity vector is better than none. It can be said that after only three years, SpaceX was able to turn an idea into a complete plan. So, how could SpaceX's plan take place? While Elon Musk did not say anything more and left much curiosity for the public community, astrophysics Ph.D. Peter Haig, in his reply to Musk's tweet, also agreed with tethering two starships. Why not send them in pairs and tether them together? Can get a long radius and easily simulate Mars gravity that way. According to it, Elon Musk will apply the concept of the von Braun wheel, which was updated from the original idea proposed in 1903. To put it simply, this wheel acts like you play the fair ride that spins around. You will probably feel the centrifugal force. When it spins, you will experience your whole body being forced into the wall behind you like you are being squished into the wall. This is the same thing that would happen on a spaceship, but obviously, you would not be squished into the floor. Those astronauts in training would experience many, many G's worth of force, when on the spaceship ship you would only experience 1G because you experience 1G on Earth. See? So the same thing happens on a spaceship. When the ship spins in a certain way, you will seemingly be pushed into the floor. This so-called force is called the centrifugal force, but it is more of a fake force. According to Newton's third law, if something is stationary, it will take a force in order to get it moving. On the ship, the whole ship is moving around you, but you would be still in the same place in space. Then, once the ship catches up to you, aka wall begins moving towards you, it will begin to push you, which acts as the force that the Earth pushes up on you when you are standing on the ground. Therefore, you have this fake kind of force called inertia that provides the force downwards, and then the wall of the ship provides the force upwards, which you feel when you stand on Earth. So how is this different from gravity? The magical thing about this is that it feels exactly like gravity and provides the exact same effects as gravity. So as long as you fine tune your spaceship to provide a force equal to what you would feel on Earth, then you have figured out artificial gravity. Because the Von Braun wheel is mainly applied on the space station, Elon Musk can fix it a little bit to suit Starship's transport mission. In fact, he will tether two Starship rockets literally and let them spin around the center of that tether. Yeah, you can see it acts like the Von Braun wheel that creates the centrifugal force. This way, astronauts inside will experience the gravity on their long trips to Mars or practically anywhere. The idea of using Starship to build such an artificial gravity wheel has also been proposed and developed by other people. In 2019, YouTuber SmallStars described another version that he calls the Gravity Link Starship, GLSA variation of SpaceX's Starship that will be able to provide its own artificial gravity. After conducting some research into centripetal force, SmallStars arrived at the idea for the GLS. As he explains in his video, the GLS is basically a hub ship, like the hub of a wheel for example where the payload bay is filled with a truss that unfolds and deploys robotically, thus serving as the wheel's spokes. 
It would be positioned between two passenger starships and would link up with them during the over six-month-long journey to Mars. Not only Elon Musk or experts, but many others are also interested in heatedly discussing this topic. One said that spinning the spacecraft itself won't work. You need at least a 40-meter diameter for humans to avoid getting dizzy and sick from the weird Coriolis and tidal forces. A typical example of the Coriolis effect in this case is when you drop an object. It does not fall directly to the floor, but appears to be deflected in the opposite direction to the space station's rotation. Obviously, this also happens to the human body, meaning it will be difficult for your brain and body to keep up with each other in movement. The present starship is 9 meters in diameter, and even though that number is up 25 meters, that's still not enough. Spinning end over end doesn't help with the present starship because the crew quarters are only about one third of the length of the thing, so maybe 15 to 20 meters in diameter. To make artificial gravity, you need a much larger spacecraft, but you can cheat in two possible ways. Build and launch two spacecraft, have them connect together with a nice, strong cable, then start them rotating about the center of the cable. Build a spacecraft that can split in two with the heavy engines and fuel tanks in one half and the crew in the other probably much lighter half. Again, connect the two halves with a nice strong cable and set them spinning. I like the second approach better because you only need one spacecraft and with the crew in the lighter part, the resulting rotation will be at a point much closer to the heavy part so you get more radius of rotation for less tension. But SpaceX has never mentioned plans for either approach. Another said that if the starships traveled in pairs, it might be possible to generate, say, Mars gravity on board by connecting the noses of the craft and using thrusters to spin them up during the cruise. Apart from the radiation risk, the greatest health risk to humans in space is zero G. Also, by splitting your crew, you could take more supplies and more hardware, and by taking two craft, you reduce the risk of mission failure, and you have a level of redundancy that has not been possible previously. The Coriolis force caused by the rotation has potential side effects. It is generally believed that at two rounds per minute or less, no adverse effects from the Coriolis forces will occur, however. People can adapt to rates as high as 23 rounds per minute. It is not yet known whether very long exposures to high levels of Coriolis forces can increase the likelihood of becoming acclimated to this type of artificial gravity. However, using a tether one mile long, the rotation could be as low as just one round per minute. Shorter tethers require higher spin rates, though. Anyway, it's so great to see Elon's determination to realize the concept of rotating a starship to create artificial gravity that has not been demonstrated on any spacecraft yet. This promises to create a new breakthrough in space travel where the game will no longer be limited to the astronaut community. How about you? Do you think that Starship can create artificial gravity this way? Let me know in the comment section below. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.